Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Lamppost Sunset, and I'm sipping on some cinnamon tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. So this is part of a series that I like to call Paint My Photo, which is a benefit that I have for my Patreon members where they get to submit their photographs and I turn some of them into YouTube tutorials. This one that I did today was submitted by Jeanette Knight. I just thought that the sky was awesome and the silhouette appearance is super cool. The glow from the from the lamp, I thought it was a nice composition, so I thought it'd be a great tutorial. So if you're interested in how to, in learning how to submit your photos for me to turn into YouTube tutorials, or you'd like to learn more about the Patreon membership program, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, chrome yellow, fluorescent orange, fire red, and Mars black. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have two brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number four round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to brushes and paints and all that good stuff. You can also purchase things individually, like my brushes. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, white, and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a gradient, which is gonna be a little bit darker blue up at the top. It's gonna to fade really light, light blue down in through here. And then we're gonna put a little bit of warmth with the brown down at the bottom. So I'm going to start with just ultramarine blue on my brush using a left to right type of brush stroke. As I come down, I would say just maybe about, I don't know, an inch, two inches down my canvas. Now I'm gonna start using white with my blue. So about equal parts of white and my blue is going on my canvas right now. And I'm getting it to blend up into that, um, that darker region. So when I do these uh, gradients, I like to often kind of put the lighter tone on below that section and then work it back up into the previous section. That for me gives me a nice kind of natural gradient. As I come down the sky, I'm using less blue on my brush. And at some point, I'm going to stop picking up the blue. So I'm just picking up a teeny tiny bit of blue at this point because again, this is gonna be behind those clouds. We don't really need a whole heck of a lot of color up in through here, but I am referring to a photograph for this painting and I did detect some um, blue 
in that sky behind the clouds. So as I'm going through this process, that's what I want to emulate as I'm going down my canvas or as I'm laying on this background, which is the sky that sits behind those beautiful sunset sunrise clouds that we're that we're going to be placing into this scenery i feel like i still want a little bit more blue up into here so i i just picked up a little bit more of my ultramarine blue just making sure i've got enough of that blue behind those clouds um, so when we go into that we were, were fully prepared and then at, again as I'm coming down the canvas I'm picking up more white in order to get it to go lighter and lighter but I don't necessarily want it to go all the way white so as you're doing yours if you're all the way white at this point you may want to add back just a tiny bit of the blue paint so you can have that um, atmospheric dimension like it is a real sky you of course you can certainly see white in skies as well but this again uh, this particular photo I was definitely seeing uh, the hint of the light blue as it was coming down towards that horizon line we are going to be having the silhouette of some trees and a beautiful lamp post which of course will be um, stealing the attention and stealing the the focal point of the of the painting but again keeping these other elements pretty true to what I'm seeing in the photograph is working for me I'm now going to be putting quite a bit of white on as I come down in through here because my my silhouette of my trees is going to take up probably um, maybe I don't know a sixth of the of the canvas at the bottom so a really small area but I am now going to be picking up brown paint so a little bit of brown on my dirty brush I'm gonna put this right down at the bottom this is gonna be behind my trees and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gently um, blend it up into that blue in through here and that's gonna give just a little or into that that sky color the light sky color in the bottom of the horizon and that's going to give us just a little bit of atmospheric dimension right behind the tree line that we're going to be putting on in a little bit so i like to refer to it as the warmth coming from the earth <laughs> which is probably not exactly what's happening but that's what happens in my painterly brain <laughs> and allows me to to uh, convey it on the canvases and then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our clouds. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step, so just make sure that it's dry. The, um, uh, the colors that I'm gonna use are white, blue, red, yellow, and orange. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom color that I'm gonna be using for the darker version of the clouds that are up at the top and some of those dark spots that are in, in the middle. So I'm gonna pre-mix myself a custom color, which I've already magically done on my palette down below here. So this is the custom color that I'm going for. I'm just gonna, I'll refer to this as maroon. How I got to this color is I used blue and red are my dominant colors, because blue and red makes a, at least my blue and red is gonna make kind of a dull um, purplish type of a tone. I put in a little bit more red in it so it, it steers it more towards like a maroon color and then I'm adding a touch of white into it to help with the opacity and to make it just a little bit lighter of a version so that way it will um, stand out nicely on my clouds or on my on my sky. So that's the color that I'm shooting for and we'll use variations of this with the orange and yellow and white and blue as we go through the process. So I'm gonna first start with a little bit of that custom uh, maroon on my uh, large brush. I'm gonna be creating some distinct areas up at the top and in through this middle area. All the while, I wanna um, keep these little pockets of the sky showing through. So right now I'm just applying this maroon type of a color and it can be pretty solid up at the top if you want it to be. It is going to turn a little bit different um, as it dries because it's on top of that blue base from um, the initial layer, layer that we had put in. And then as I come down, I'm gonna leave these little pockets 
of the sky showing through. So I've got this coming down in through here. I'm going to kind of close this off over in through here. And these bristle brushes are great for these type of effects because you can leave these kind of soft edges merging into um, neighboring areas. So if I want this to show through some of that sky, I can almost use like a dry brush type of effect to accomplish that. If you're in through here and you're saying, mm, I want that blue to be a little bit more dominant, you could always wash and dry your brush and go back in for a little bit of that um, blue and white combination just to soften it up a little bit. So I just picked up a touch of blue and white and I can, um, I can manipulate or kind of soften that sky in between, just making sure that it has its, um, the look that you're going for and that it kind of blends in with those clouds or that makes those clouds at least look like they are um, you know, have their soft edges that you want and you don't have to go exactly as I'm going I'm just kind of um, emulating the photo that I'm seeing but we'll add more to it as we go so I'm washing and drying my brush again so I can put more of that custom maroon color on as I'm coming down here now I'm going to get pretty darn bold in a minute with my color choices but right now I'm going to put some strategic dark areas with this maroon color and then I will um, blend it into some very vibrant tones of the sky. In this particular photo that I'm emulating there's almost like this diagonal type of a pattern to the um, to the cloud formation with these dark spots in it. So that's what I'm first trying to um, at least put in place so I have an idea of um, kind of what direction I want these clouds to go in and where these dark marks kind of um, reside. And of course you can always manipulate this later with um, different with additional layers and things of that nature, but this just kind of sets your mind straight and kind of gets you um, with an idea of where you want those dark areas to be. So now that I've got that, now I can start incorporating my orange and maybe a little bit of red to get this to really pop and be more vibrant. I've got a lot of bright clouds down in through here. So I'm gonna pick up some of my maroon plus a little bit of orange. So I know for me when I'm doing clouds, that the colors seem to all um, have gradients in them, especially these big, huge cloud formations like this where they're just really drenched with that, um, with the light source, the effects of the light source. So I am really just trying to capture that, um, that vibrancy and that essence. I'm, I picked up a little bit more of my maroon with that orange just to um, get these colors to go a little bit darker up and through here as I see them in the photo. And again, I'm working off of a photo reference. So I'm emulating the uh, pattern of the clouds that I'm seeing in the photograph. But if you're going through your process and you're like, well, that's nice that, you know, those are in that formation, but there are no two formations of clouds alike. So if you're going through yours and you're saying, well, I put a more orange cloud over here and I really like it, just go for it. You don't have to make yours exactly as mine. I'm just softening these edges up and through here as it's meeting that light blue area. And I'm using at this point a pretty light touch to um, soften what is the wet paint, um, getting it to kind of have this soft look to it as it's drying. Uh, that way I'm, I'm not lifting the paint off of the canvas, but I'm leaving a nice thin layer that if I want to in a minute, I can continue to build on it. So I'm going to bring my clouds somewhere down in this vicinity. Um, so I'm going to just continue with that orange and the, and the um, maroon color for a minute here. And then in a minute, I'm going to start incorporating some yellow and white on top of this in order to get it to have an even, um, I would say, lighter variation down towards the bottom. If you wanted to, you could also incorporate red. So I predominantly had the red on my palette to make that maroon, but as you're going through your process, if you feel that you want yours to be uh, more lively with 
with the um, effects of red in it, you could certainly emulate that. I'm not seeing much blue in um, the sky over here, maybe just a little pop kind of in through here. So this, it looks like it's all pretty much clouds in through here. So I'm just kind of laying this on top of my blue. And again, nice thin layer so I can kind of um, add to it if I want. So now I'm gonna start, maybe just a little bit more of this orange uh, maroon. I'm gonna add just a teeny tiny touch of white on my brush right now as I'm working my way down here. So this is maroon, orange, and a tiny touch of white on my brush as I'm coming down in through here. I just have to be mindful. I don't wanna go past, I'm actually gonna mark it right now because I have a feeling I'm gonna go past if I don't mark it in through here and in through here. That's about as far down as I want my clouds to go. <laughs> Sometimes if I don't mark things, I really um, have a tough time uh, stopping <laughs> where I wanna go. So this is pretty good in through here. I've got some neat tone variations. I do want some of this similar color to what I just did here. I want this down at the bottom a little bit, so I am gonna pick up a little bit more of my maroon orange and white. Very little bit on my brush right now because I just want to give these really kind of um, tiny soft little clouds in through here, maybe a little bit more of my maroon. And again, in a minute, I'm going to start um, putting a little bit of yellow and white and um, altering some of these, making them a little bit lighter or darker in certain places. I'm making them smaller down at the bottom here because that's what I'm seeing in the um, in the photo reference. So clouds can really take on all different kinds of shapes and um, formations. So as you're going through yours, even if you want to follow your own kind of photograph, just watching those little color patterns and how they are being displayed. Like I feel like there's a couple of little darker marks down in through here. So I just picked up a little bit more of that maroon a little darker in through here. So that's looking pretty good. There's little peekaboo spots of the sky in through here. So I just wanna emulate that. And then now that I've got them pretty much where I feel that they're a good representation of the photograph, I wanna start adding some more yellowish tones down at the bottom. Now I know that the maroon, because there's blue in it, if I start to add yellow, it's gonna either turn a little greenish or a little brownish on me. So I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush before I go into those, um, what I'm gonna call yellowy type of tones. So washing and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow, orange, and white. Just a little bit of all three colors on my brush. And I'm gonna start to add these um, soft little yellow, might be a little bit too much yellow on my brush. Pick up more of my orange and my white, <laughs> just making it kind of like a little peachy type of a cone tone. I don't want it too, too yellow. I'll probably dull that little spot down in a minute. And just, I'm seeing it at kind of the bottom of these clouds. So I just, again, I'm just playing with what I'm seeing in the photo, which is this softness at the bottom of like this tier of the clouds. And then I will start to add um, oh, that looks so pretty. That over there looks great. <laughs> so this part over here, I wanna dull down a little bit. It's so funny when I'm doing this, it's like, ooh, I love that color. That color is speaking to me and it's working really well and it's you know emulating the, the um, picture the way that I want it to. And then other times it's like, mm, that's not as close as I want it. So I just kind of keep fiddling until I'm satisfied with those tones that I'm, that I'm creating. But again, it's a matter of being able to uh, see them in the photograph. So that's looking nice to me. Now I just need to kind of put another layer on these clouds in through here because they look a little unfinished to me. And again, I have the yellow on my brush right now, which is not gonna work well as I get up into those purpley tones. So, cause it'll turn it to brown. So I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna hit this just with one more finessing layer. So I'm in essence going to be kind of using the same colors that I started with. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that maroon. And as I go through this, maybe now's the time where I say, mm, I think I want a little bit more red over here. So I just picked up a tiny bit of red and I can put these additional tones 
into the clouds just by using a tiny bit of, uh, of another thin layer on top of them. So maroon, maybe a little bit of red happening over in through here. I can even incorporate a little bit more blue if I wanted to. So I could pick up some of my uh, ultramarine blue, kind of put that up in through here, maybe even a touch of white as it's going towards the top of this area in through here, just kind of lightening this up a little bit. Again, seeing it a little bit lighter in, in the photo up and through here. So just making it, you know, up here as I can see those spots in the photo. So I might as well just make sure that I've incorporated them to the best of my ability if I'm going for that, you know, realistic appearance. You might say you don't need to go that far. I'm picking up a little bit of my um, orange and my maroon at the bottom of this cloud here I see a little bit of lightness so just a little bit of lightness at the bottom of there and this is just where I start to finesse orange and my um, my maroon you could even go maroon plus a little bit of white or you know whatever whatever little values you feel are going to to help get you in that place I'm gonna pick up a little bit more maroon now so I can accentuate this darkness in this one so the dark areas I can accentuate and that's what I do when I find my my color pattern that especially with clouds that I know that again all, all cloud formations can be different from one another right now I'm just accentuating those darker areas that um, we kind of put on initially and now I'm just going back making sure they're speaking well with all the little clouds next to them so I put on my color pattern and now because I'm using such a uh, versatile brush for this particular type of um, painting technique I can slowly just kind of go back and build these layers until and I, again I'm doing it very um, slowly with thin layers that you could certainly I think one of the toughest things is when we do these, we put a lot of paint on our brush and we try and rush through it and just get everything done in one pass. And that's going to make for probably a pretty flat looking um, display of, of clouds. I just put on some orange with my, with my um, maroon color to finish up these little guys in through here. And these almost look a little too orange for me. So I'm gonna to touch my brush in a touch of red just to accentuate those red tones in through there. So again, just kind of tweaking it on this last layer with little bits of red, making sure that I've got a nice second coat on here that's uh, ac accentuating the direction and the tones that I'm seeing in those clouds. And then once I've got, I'm gonna do just a little bit more in through here, I'm thinking. So right now I'm just kind of flipping back and forth between orange, red, um, my maroon color. And in a minute, I'm gonna probably pick up a little bit of white. That's looking pretty. I'm thinking I, uh, down at the bottom, I want just a little bit more, maybe even red with that maroon. Just, I see a little bit in this fun little, uh, there's a couple of little, pieces of clouds over in through here. And again, I don't need every cloud exactly in the same exact place it is, that it is in the photo, but if I wanted to represent that photo pretty well, uh, taking on those, um, those directions and those, those patterns is what's gonna make it really believable as the, same, um, as the same place that you're trying to emulate. I just picked up a little bit more red to go underneath this little guy in through here and then I'm probably going to put a little bit more in through here with my red and my maroon and now I hardly have any paint on my brush just to kind of get these last little speckles in through through here. I, I'm seeing little peekaboo spots of the sky behind it so I want to just make sure I keep those in there and then I'm gonna just kind of dry brush this over here. I'm probably going to put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush in a second. So I really did do just about a second coat over the entire thing. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush just to soften this bottom, soften the yellow a little bit. And then I'm going to let mine dry 
and see if there's any additional little tweaks that I want to do to it. Ooh, I see a little, can't go any farther yet. There's a little tiny drifting cloud down in through here that I'm noticing. Itty bitty bit, little, little cloud just saying, hey, don't forget about me. I'm just sticking out in this bottom and through here. <laughs> Those fun little clouds will get you every time. And then once you've got that done, you can, we're going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So you can put this away, take out something to draw with and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our lamp. I'm going to be using my chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm going to guide you through a series of markers. We're going to connect those markers and we're going to create some nice basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So we're not going for any fine tuned detail, just a nice basic shape for the lamp and its pole, pole post <laughs> that we'll be able to color in. So I'm having mine way over here on the left hand side of my canvas. You could put multiple ones you could you know have a big one and then some small ones i'm just going for something again that's representational of the photo reference that i'm using but you can certainly alter this to whatever way you want so what i'm first going to do is i am going to find myself um uh, well let's start at the bottom of the canvas i guess so i'm going to come in bottom left hand corner about three three and a half inches somewhere in this vicinity is going to be my first marker. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my brush as a measuring tool. You could use any anything that you want, but I want to know how far away from the edge of my canvas I made this mark. And I'm going to make several other marks going up so I can kind of give myself a straight line without um, having to do too much work to create that straight line. Oh, you can't see that through there. <laughs> let, me, let me put a pencil mark there so you can see that. And then I'm gonna go up until I would say I'm about maybe, um, maybe about five, five and a half inches from the top of my canvas. So somewhere in through here is about as high as I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna connect all of these markers to give myself a vertical line like this and then I'm going to make another vertical line about a half of an inch away from it to the right. So you could do the same thing, make more markers down it or you could just kind of eyeball it and give yourself um, another line that's about a half of an inch away from that first one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself the bottom of the lamp because we're looking at it kind of in a um, from underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up from here about a quarter to an eighth of an inch, give myself a horizontal line that is about an inch wide and it's a little bit over to the left. Then I'm going to give myself two little diagonal lines like this and then just connect like this. So I've made myself a parallelogram. <laughs> so for taking myself back to math class in eighth grade. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come directly up from these two corners until I would say I'm about three, three and a half inches away from the edge of the top of the canvas. So I'm going to go straight up from here and then out to the right just a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch and same thing up here. Go straight up and then out maybe about a half of an inch, something like that. And then I'm going to connect here to here, here to here, and then I'll connect these guys in a horizontal way. Now I'm going to make another diagonal line that's similar to this one it, in the photo. It looks like it's going down just a little bit more of an angle or a pretty similar angle, something like that. And then I'm going to connect here to here like that. I'm now going to make the topper of this, the pole, a lamp is pretty much in the silhouette. This whole pole down here is in the silhouette and then the topper is as well. And we're really just seeing kind of the front side of the topper. So if you find yourself kind of the middle of here and go straight up until you're about maybe a half of an inch away from the top of the canvas, that's about, it might be, it might be a little bit to the right of the center of here. It's almost um, if you go straight up from here that'll give you the center because that would make sense. If you go straight up from your pole 
regardless of how this is tipped, that should be where the tip of the, uh, how this is turned, the, uh, the tip of it should be directly straight above here. So something like that. And then I'm again going to make mine pretty similar to the photo. I can't really do much detail with my chalk, but I can certainly give something similar to guide me through my drawing process. So I'm going to go like this and like this, and then these guys just kind of come up in a diagonal like that. This whole uh, right hand side you can't see, and when we uh, start to make our little uh, paint or painting marks, you'll understand how this makes a whole lot of sense, even though it looks a little crooked right now. <laughs> so that's, oh, I need to do, uh, there's a little pole thing going across. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that that is somewhere in this vicinity in through here. I'm going to just give myself a horizontal line and then just a couple little circles on the edges like that. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. I'm going to be using my um my my law my <laughs> what brush am i using i'm going to use my small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your chalk away take out a small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat to our lamp i'm using my small brush i'm going to be using black and hmm, i think i'm just going to Black and white paint is what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint the inside of here. I'm going to put a primer coat of white on, and then I'm going to paint black, um, a black layer on everything else. Uh, so that way, when we go to do the, the inside of our lamppost, we won't have any difficulty with coverage. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of white paint and just give myself a simple base coat inside these two panels. And again, I don't need to do anything perfect. I'm just kind of rubbing in a thin layer of white paint right now. And that way, because that background is, uh, for me, so dark with those clouds, I want my light within my um, lamp to be really vibrant in the center. And this is just going to help me achieve that in an easier way than, than trying to build um, later trying to build all these bright tones on top of it. So this will just give me a, a head start. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to paint the rest of the lamppost with black paint. I'm using a little bit of water in my black paint to thin it out a little bit so I can get these nice crisp uh, clean lines, especially uh, down the pole. I have a shaky hand so what I like to do is kind of rest my hand on my canvas as I go down these lines. You, um, there's so many different kinds of methods that you can utilize in order to get your hand to stay straight. There's, um, there's sticks you can use. You could also uh, mask off the area with some tape. You can, you know, use rulers. You can use all kinds of different aids in order to help you get um, those straight lines, but I like to just figure out ways to to do it um, with with my own <laughs> hand and my own um, ways, just because it it gives me the freedom. It makes it makes it so I don't have to rely upon other things to do the job at at hand. And that's you know that's just the way I operate. Um, but you know. There's always a, a use for, for tools to, to help people through their process. So whatever, whatever works for you is, is the way that you should do it. Like right now, I am kneeling <laughs> on my floor because I know that I'm being able to see these lines easier. I've got a better angle on my, on my hand. So that's, that's my tool I'm using right now is my knee <laughs> to just keep me um, stable on the floor below me. So that's looking pretty good. I'll probably um, come back once it dries and just finesse it a little bit, but we got another step to go on it later. So that's all I'm gonna do right now on that little step on this guy going across here. I am noticing in the um, photo that it, it appears to be a little bit wider, these little horizontal things as they get to the base of the pole. 
So I'm going to just kind of start it pretty narrow here and then just push my brush a little bit firmer as it goes into that post and then do the same thing over here just kind of um, not push it hard here and then as I go into the post just push my brush a little bit harder that give it a little bit wider of a um, base and then these little circles I probably didn't get them as perfect as I wanted them with my chalk because the chalk is kind of on the bigger side so I'll finesse them right now into a more circular type of a shape and then if there's any r residue from my chalk after I'm done making these little shapes I can certainly just erase that with a touch of water so oops I just made that one bigger <laughs> It's all right. That means I'm going to make this one bigger too. And you just make, keep making them bigger and bigger until <laughs> you get them symmetrical or don't worry about it. And then I'm going to um, do, there's other little details around here. So I'm going to um, just do as I see in the photo. So there's a little bump out part right in through here and here and down here. So when, I, again, this is just, I'm emulating what I'm seeing in the photo. So I took the basic shape that I saw on the post, and that's where we started with our outline. Now as I am developing my details, I'm looking at the other little um, aspects of the design of this post. So there's a, little, there's a little bump out in through here too. So I'm just gonna emulate that, and we can see it on the left side, but not as much just because of the angle that the pole is at so something like that now I'm gonna work my way up so I have this parallelogram <laughs> sometimes I think gosh school was not worth it and then when I go to <laughs> when I, it was worth it that's just that's a silly thing for me to say um, when I go to do stuff like this I'm like oh yeah I totally remember uh, what was a geometry class um, where we had to learn these specific shapes and stuff so it all comes back full circle at some point in your life so school's totally worth it whether or not you liked it or not so that's pretty good now i'm going to just do my outline and then um, where my chalk mark is and then i will start to um i'll show you the other little pieces that we're gonna put in place so just diagonal in through here diagonal in through here and again if you go outside your chalk lines that's totally fine I continue to put a little bit of water in my paint so that way I have these nice crisp lines I probably should have done this one on the left hand side first so I don't run into wet paint with my hand of course I can't talk while I'm doing this there we go <laughs> that's good enough <laughs> hold my breath now I, now I'm gonna um Let's see, I'm gonna do these guys in through here. So you'll see in a minute how this um, shape kind of morphs itself with little decorative elements along the sides. I'm gonna just kind of get this top part before I lose my thought here. Bring that down like that. It's got a little triangle on the top. And of course, as you're going through this, if you're saying, oh, that brush is just too big for me to use in this little area, just switch to a smaller size. I knew that um, I was going to have kind of a little bit bigger areas to, to paint in. So that's why I chose to do the, use this brush. This has got a little kind of um, bumpy thing. Let's see here, little bumpy thing like this and like this, and then it kind of scoots out like that and like that looks like this left side is a little bit bigger probably because of the angle that the lamp post is at i'm going to connect here to here just a horizontal line i know the top portion i'm going to be coloring all in with black so i can be pretty um care or pretty aggressive with the width of that line there's a little um let me just paint this in black here so I can um, not get distracted by that being unpainted right now. So this whole thing is gonna be painted with black. And then I'm, there's little decorative elements. I'll show you in one second here. We've got 
this whole area painted with black, I've got to connect here to here, like this. So there's, um, on this particular lamp, this topper kind of sticks out on the sides. So I'm going to make it stick out right here, like this, just kind of point that and then bring it just past this little area there and also right in through here. So bring it just out like that. It almost looks like it's like a lid or something. Um, I'm thinking that that's pretty good. That looks pretty representational. And again, I will erase any of my chalk marks that don't work. I'm going to go down the center with my um, with a skinny black line uh, to put the grid on the outside of the glass. Because we're going to be putting a light that's going to be shining on this grid, I want to do it first. So you'll see how this plays out later. I'm going to make these lines skinnier so I'm not pressing as hard. I'm just going to go right down the middle like that. I'm going to go right down the middle of this one like this, slowly. <laughs> and then I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to find almost the midpoint. It might be a little bit lower than the midpoint. So I'm going to just kind of make a little marker there. I'm going to go diagonal on this side like that. Oh, that wasn't the right angle. There you go, like that. And then this is just going to be horizontal. And then once you've got this done, we're going to actually use this brush and the large brush for the next step. So you can wash and dry this brush and get your large brush ready also for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the tree line. So I'm going to be using my large brush and my small brush because uh, there's going to be some branches and there's one little tiny building that um, there seems to be a silhouette of in the photo reference. So I'm going to do that as well. I'm just going to be using black paint. You could certainly, if you wanted to, you could add little twinkles of highlights from your sunset colors and stuff like that. But in the photo, I'm seeing it as predominantly just a silhouette. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to start with my black paint on my large brush and very little bit, just a tiny little bit on the tip of my brush. I'm going to put in place um, this silhouette of these of these trees. So I'm going to be using mostly a dotting type of a technique. It's going the foliage is going to be thicker down at the bottom and then up at the tops. I'm going to be kind of pulling out just using the tip of my brush and you'll see it get a little bit thinner, a uh, little thinner representations of the leaves and stuff as I go up towards the um, the tops of the of whatever that particular tree formation is. And then that'll make it, you'll be able to see the little peekaboo spots through um, at the top and then at the bottom it'll be thicker that, and you won't be able to see through it. So again, I'm just going to kind of follow the pattern in the photo that I'm seeing, but if you wanted to um, change it up at all, you can feel free to do so. There's a little building right in through here that I'm going to be doing with my small brush. So I'm going to save room for that. And we're going to put little, little bushes in through here, little bush up in through here. And again, if this isn't the brush for you, you could totally um, change to a smaller bristle, bristle brush or even a fan type of a brush will give you um, some nice edges to uh, the silhouette of the foliage. I've got this kind of coming up softly up and through here. And we're going to put some branches um, and tree trunks and stuff in after I get this in place. But you can see I'm leaving it thinner at the top and thicker down at the bottom. So it'll give it that um, just real nice silhouette type of look. I got, I think there's a little one coming out in through there. And we've got this just coming down in through here. I think there's a little couple of little peekaboo spots down in through here. And of course, you know, you could be um, making this represent a, a landscape that you're familiar with. You know, maybe you've got an area near to you, like a park or something. Oh, I got some black in my sky. I'm going to have to 
fix that sometime. <laughs> um, maybe you've got a, a park near you or something that has a pretty tree line that you want to emulate. So feel free to customize this um, in whatever way that you want. This is a, a really fun, pretty simple type of a painting that you can easily customize to represent um, somewhere that you're familiar with, somewhere that you want to be familiar with. Uh, let's see, we've got this going on in through here. Um, there's also another um, kind of treetop in through here that will be, there's going to be some um, uh, tree trunks and branches and stuff just trying to emulate where this is placed based on that, and that little cloud that is just all by itself in that in the um, skyscape and I'm, I'm hardly touching my canvas right now because I don't want these leaves to look really full because that's uh, again what I'm seeing in in the picture so I just want to try and um, stay true to that and then once I've got this on I'm going to pull out my small brush in order to put in um, the other little aspects of this uh, little landscape that I see. So my small brush is coming out. I've got a little tiny building of sorts somewhere in through here. It almost looks like it's uh, maybe like the top of a church or something or a little monument of sorts. So something like this. It just looks to be kind of almost like tall triangular type of a shape. Maybe it's a rocket ship. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> but we're just we're just gonna put it in because that's that's what I'm seeing. It's got a couple little bumps on the sides of it. Maybe it is a tall tree for all I know. It just is. Um, it's got a much more unusual shape than all the other little trees next to it. So I'm thinking it might just be a little building. So now I'm gonna um, put a little bit of water in my my black paint. Give myself a couple of little strategic like. Uh, branches of sh of sorts it's going to be most evident over um, on this right side in through here so we've got a couple of pretty um, evident tree trunks of sorts in through here so that's what I'm doing I'm just gonna put these in through here and again if you felt that you wanted to add some of those um, some of those sunrise or sunset type of colors in through here that it would really make sense so don't again feel that I, i'm sure if i took this photo and and put it in photoshop or something and said you know enhance the natural colors it would pull those out so don't feel that you have to do it exactly as i'm doing it um you can certainly explore what is bringing you know, pleasure to your eye. And then we're gonna be using this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry a small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our lamp. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are predominantly white, black, yellow, and orange. And if there's a need for me to go into another color, I will, and I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna be doing, oh, first I'm gonna just put some water on my brush and get rid of my chalk marks so they don't distract me. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is I wanna add the light inside my, um, my lamp, make sure that any of this exterior part is finished all the way, um, and then we'll be done. <laughs> so the light inside, and any details. So the, I'm putting the light on inside but there's also other stuff that I'm seeing in the photo. So there's the mechanism that the bulb goes into. And then I think that there's, we're seeing part of underneath this lid in there. We're also seeing some reflection on the outside of the glass. So like on this side, I'm seeing some of the orange from the, um, from the sunset colors. And on this side, I feel like I'm seeing like a reflection perhaps of some trees or something that are off in the distance. So I'm just gonna paint what I see. And um, you're gonna notice as I do this, some areas are gonna take on a greenish appearance. And what that is being caused by is there's, this is a black 
um, structure, the, the black cast iron or whatever this is made of underneath, mixing with the yellow um, from the light bulb, it will give it a greenish appearance. So that's where you're gonna see some green on this side and then you'll see some like orangey tones on this side. So where I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with yellow and white. So a little bit of yellow and white are going on my brush at the same time. Oops, and my hip's gonna hit my easel at the same time. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this um, and I'm going to just start adding this yellow glow inside the lamp. I do want to have this glow kind of intermingling with the exterior um, um, framework of the of the lamp. So I'm going right over that right now, and you'll you'll see how that has an effect later on. I will come back and um, enhance some of the areas on it with uh, with black. But right now, just kind of getting my base coat on here or my, my, you know, glowing color on here with my yellow and white. And then we'll, we'll start to modify everywhere that we need to. I'm even going to do it over here. So if you have paint that has great opacity to it and you're not able to see that um, cross brace in it right now, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, I'll show you how to put it back on there. But... I'm using it so I so it kind of it lets the light glow around it. So once I've got that on there, I'm going to actually wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to um, while that's drying, I'm going to just kind of finish the rest of the lamp. So all I really need to do is I'm going to be putting black where I need to put black, and I'm probably I'm going to pull in a little bit of um, maybe just a little highlight on some of these areas with a touch of um, white just to give it a little bit of um, uh, some structure other than it being totally flat. But right now I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of a second layer with black in the areas that I feel need to be um, taken care of. So black with a little bit of water on my brush. And this would be the time that if there was areas that needed to be cleaned up, I could certainly take care of that. Um, or I could leave it whatever wherever your comfort zone is. I definitely need to hit this top again because I see lots of areas where I can see right through to my sky and this right side looks like it needs to be a little um, needed to be a little finessed. So that's looking fine to me. Now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pick up black with a touch of white on it. And when I say just a touch, I'm talking just a itty bitty tiny touch on my brush. So what this is gonna do, I'm gonna just kind of give a couple of little strategic highlights, maybe one in here, one here, maybe a little bit down in through here. I don't need to do much. I just felt like I wanted to do, uh, have a little tiny something on there as opposed to it just being flat black so again that'll be up to you if you if you want to add that or not i don't really see much of it in the oops in the photo but um it feeds my painterly eye so i often know that my painterly eye needs to be fed so when it needs to be fed i take care of it um so i'm gonna just put a little tiny touch up in through here as well and that makes me happy and then once I've got that, now I can just kind of start, um, of course, if I can ever stop doing these highlights now because they're making me happy. Um, now I'm gonna start working on, on that bottom part. So, or the inside part. So this is where I'm gonna take a little bit of black and yellow. So on my palette, I'm mixing a touch. I'm taking yellow and t putting a teeny tiny touch of black paint in it. And you're gonna see this um, green color start to emerge on my palette. Just a teeny tiny bit of black paint will do it. And once I've got that color, that's where I'm gonna start with those effects on the inside of the glass. So right in through here, I'm gonna take this um, top portion. And, ooh, I can use a little bit more black. I thought that that was gonna be not, not green enough, but we're gonna, we're gonna add just a touch more black to my mixture. There we go. I need to be able to see it in order for it to have the effect. So I'm just taking a little bit up in this top portion 
And of course, if you felt that you wanted to go a little bit more bold than me, you certainly can. I'm just, again, trying to emulate what I'm seeing in the photo. I could be more bold than that. I'm just not being bold enough. I'm taking a little bit more black into the equation. Sometimes you just gotta play with it until it does what you want. Well, that, that's too wet for me to put another layer. I've gotta put some of this stuff down here, so I just picked up more and made it darker as well. I'm gonna come all, probably up to about here. This is that area where I said I was seeing like a little reflection, I think, of like surrounding trees. So I'm just putting this on in through here. And when I bump into my um, my exterior piece, I can, I can manipulate that later. I'm picking up a touch more black on my dirty brush so I can get this to go just a little bit darker in through here because I think some of what I'm seeing is the little bit of a um, uh, the housing of that light bulb. So something like that will make me happy. I'm gonna go back up top to this little section up and through here just to get these corners a little bit darker, bring in a little bit more of this darker tone up and through here like that. That works for me, just blending it out. It looks like it's a little bit lighter in that center of the top, but I'll take care of that in a second here. I'm going to now move over to this right panel. I'm going to pull in a little bit of my um, fluorescent orange. I might use some red too once I see how this goes, but I just pulled, I just picked up some, yeah, that's definitely going to be too orange. I'm going to pull a little bit of red. I didn't say I was going to use red in this step, but I'm pulling in a little bit of red with my fluorescent orange. So I'm going to pull this right into the bottom of here and then maybe just a little bit up into the top, wiping my brush off. Just gonna get it to blend down just a little bit into that glow of the lamp like that. That looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna work on the bright part and the inside of the light. So this is the light bulb. So I'm picking up some white paint and I'm gonna make a big area in here, but it's gonna kind of cross over and show a little bit the brace. So I'm doing this kind of around the brace because I feel that when I do it like this, it makes it look a little bit more natural, like it's almost glowing. Um, it's creating a glow on top of that brace part. I do want it to look kind of um, circular in shape. So I'm just kind of, um, slowly blending it out like this. I am gonna make it look a little bit bigger or bring it a little bit wider than I want it because I'm gonna put a bright, bright yellow glow um, on the edges of this glow <laughs> in a minute. So that will, that will help um, do that if I bring this out just a little bit further like that. And again, you can see I'm kind of crossing over my brace part in a, in a couple of areas and that's gonna make it look a little bit more natural. Um, like it is illuminating those little edges, something like that works for me. I'm gonna bring a little tiny bit over into this area over on the right hand side. Again, just to kind of accentuate the center of that in through there. Maybe this comes over just a little bit more like that. And then I'm going to uh, pick up, I just wiped my brush off, I'm picking up some chrome yellow and I'm going to accentuate the edges of this. Hmm, it's looking pretty good. Just going over that white a little bit. And if you felt that this wasn't popping the way that you want. I feel like I even want to add a little bit more glow over like on the edge where it meets the brace over here. I just picked up a little bit of white and yellow right in this area, right over on that tippy edge where they're kind of meeting one another. That's gonna give me an extra little bit of a glow over in through there. Should I do it over here? Oh, I know what else I want. I want a little bit of lightness up at the top inside that housing. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of watered down white paint, just a little bit of white with water on my brush, right up in here. And again, I will, I'm gonna uh, modify that brace, that exterior frame in a minute, 
but I see that there's a little light area up in through here on the photo, so I just wanna make sure I account for that. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna enhance the center a little bit more with a little bit more white. So I just keep layering on this white in the center until it gets as bright as I want it to. And if it doesn't seem like it gets bright enough for you, you can always amp up the contrast of the colors outside of it. So you could make your yellow darker or your greenish tone darker, and that's gonna make this center area brighter. It's just a trick that, you know, Sometimes white doesn't look white enough. I'm actually adding a little bit more of that green tone, maybe a little bit um, more into that lamp just to, again, make it look a little bit more like that photo. There we go, we're getting there now. Even, you can even pull it up just a little bit in through here. And then I'm thinking that this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna bring that, um, that brace back now. So I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of black paint on my brush. And I'm going to, in, I'm gonna bring these uh, exterior braces back and make them more evident. So just paint, I'm not going all the way to that center. I'm, may, I'm coming kind of on the outside and then just kind of letting them disappear in the light. So kind of pushing my brush a little bit here and then just getting them to disappear in that light. The same thing up here, just getting it to disappear in that light. And then you can certainly do any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary. I might let mine dry for a minute and see if I wanna amp up that light in the middle at all. And if I do, I certainly, if I want to, I will, <laughs> but I'm thinking it looks pretty good at the moment from where I'm standing. <laughs> so once you've got the yours done, we're gonna be using this small brush for the last step. So you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush to do so. I think I'm going bottom left with, where are we going here? I'm gonna go um, with some orange paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you can certainly sign yours with your first name or the date, or you can pick a symbol, whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however, you would like, and that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a fun sunset silhouette type of painting, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.